Hi all. Um, I do hope that the broken glass at the beginning of my presentation will bring me luck. But just in case, be warned. Uh, if I start dancing, that means the, the, the floor is wet, so it might happen to me. Uh, so let me start first off with we are our humans, and we do mistakes. If you're not a human, and if you do not mistakes, I think you should better leave this presentation. That's, that's how it works. Uh, so my name is Maciej and I work for Red Hat. Uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere in the internet under Soltis. That includes GitHub, Twitter, even at Red Hat. Um, who of you were recently uh, touched or uh, had a connection or was disrupted by the S3 uh, problem about a couple weeks ago? I do believe some of you. Okay, so uh, have you guys got a chance to read the postmortem of that event? Let me quote you what, what they wrote. So, an authorized S3 member uh, using established playbook executed a comment which was intended to remove a small number of servers for one of the S3 subsystems. Unfortunately, one of the inputs of the command was entered incorrectly, and a larger set of servers was removed that intended. OK, that makes sense. But the question is, are we able to know what is going on in the uh, Kubernetes cluster? We are serving billions of requests every hour, depending on the traffic that you have. Are you able to track what happened, or most importantly, who's responsible for the problem? What was the problem? Was it a malicious user? Was it a mistake by a user? I'm going to talk about the auditing feature that we currently have in the Kubernetes, and hopefully uh, what the future holds for, uh, for that feature. So let me tell you a story how the current auditing feature that we have uh, was brought to life. So sometime last year, Mike came over to me and poked me and he said, Maciej, we need very simple logging feature, you know, kind of like we'll say that we'll say, oh, this user um, access that URL and that's it. And it would be nice if it if it also logged the um, the returned code. So I started poking with uh, David Eats and Stefan, and um, we figure out that it will be the best option currently to create a additional filter. So every single request that comes into API, Cube API server goes through a bunch of different filters currently. Uh, that includes request context, which creates a context for the entire request, and it's then uh, reused or eventually filled in with additional metadata. Um, that includes request info. Uh, we're checking um, how, many um, how many requests are in flight. We check if none of the requests is is not exceeding the timeout. Uh, we do some panic recovery in those filters, of course. Uh, but most importantly, we also do authentication, impersonation, and authorization. Are you familiar with these three terms? There, or there is some, uh, some more information needed for the three of them? OK, cool. So, and, and we started discussing where would be the best option, because obviously we thought that the best option currently would be to just hook in into the request flow that we have. And the only question was, where in the request flow do we want to log the actual events? So after some poking, we figure out that, most importantly, we want to know who was the user who invoked the action. So we need to go after the authentication. But at the time, we already had the impersonation, which allows you to act as a different user. And we still wanted to be able to have that information within the current audit log. So we figured out, OK, authentication is, has to be before. But we need to also happen, uh, be, the audit has to happen before the actual impersonation uh, will take place. So we just created a simple filter. And that's the current place where the filter uh, is, is, uh, is placed. So let me show you a quick demo. Uh, you can basically turn on the, uh, the audit and currently with uh, passing uh, some of the, uh, the flags. 
the most important one, which actually enables the auditing, is the last one, added log path. That can be either a, uh, a file where the log file where the auditing will be written to or a uh, um, dash if you want to get that to std out. Um, the other allow you to um, uh, roll the file when it will be changed, how many entries in it, how about the size, etc. cetera, the, the usual uh, rolling of the files. So, okay, some trickery, good. So I just did three random cube get commands, but I didn't care about the output much. And let me show you the current output. So the current output and the most important things that we have is the IP of the incoming request, the method that was done, the user, eventually if we have that information about groups, we also keep the information if the user was at, uh, is working as himself or he was impersonating. And in the third case where I was uh, working as a user, uh, well, I was from a user token, but I was impersonating as an admin. In the last case, I have a clear information that I was, although I am a user, the as is filled with, uh, with an admin that I was uh, working as. Um, the two requests, because uh, the time when the request comes in and goes out, are correlated by the ID that is uh, uniquely uh, that is generated upon the uh, the initial request, and then so that you can actually correlate the response. Uh, that's that's basically that's basically it about the demo. So very simplistic, as I said. Uh, but at the time when I was writing th writing uh, the audit back then. We didn't have the, uh, the aggregated cube server. Currently, the same set of flags can be passed to the uh, aggregated cube server, which is a new thing since 1.6. OK, uh, let me give you a small warning. Audit does not provide additional security to your system. There's some people uh, who would like to have it that way. I was recently struggling with an idea that uh, somebody would like to be able to figure out if his server is DDoSed by uh, looking at the audit log. But I said, like, currently we do not do that because the audit is after authentication, so only auth authenticated users are actually logged. Oh, one thing that I didn't mention uh, a minute ago is that um, the audit logs currently also works for the non-secured endpoint. So if you're hitting the non-secured endpoint, you'll just have the information about users, groups, uh, as user, as group. Those will be empty. So obviously, we want to work with secured uh, cube system. So let's get go back to some boring stuff and the definition of the auditing. Well, if you if you look internet about the auditing, the majority information that is there is about performing auditing of the systems, but not a lot about how to write a system for uh, performing some kind of a log trail, what's happening in the system, etc. There is a NIST uh, definition which clearly states that an audit is maintaining a record of activity of users or uh, other components of the system. And that's, that's, that's very important because currently our audit treats evenly uh, all the components of the system. That includes users, but as well controllers, nodes, and everything. Every single element of the entire cube that is reaching the API server will be logged. I explicitly, if you remember correctly, I explicitly grabbed through the audit logs just to get the information about the pods request that I was. If I did not, we would see tons of, tons of uh, get requests for, uh, for jobs, for, um, for deployment, for replica sets, for pods, et cetera, et cetera. From all of the uh, from all of the other controllers and components of the system, and as I said, 
audit trail can assist in detecting security violation, but it is not a replacement for any of those systems. Um, I did some more Googling and searching for resources where we could base our current work around auditing. I used to, uh, I used to write one system for auditing that was just, well, we want to do this and that, and we were like, yeah, that fits in what the customer wants. We, we just followed that. But this time I wanted to do it properly. Uh, so we did with Stefan a little bit of investigation. And actually OpenStack uh, is using cloud, uh, cloud Auditing Data Federation for defining uh, how the audit should look like. And actually the NIST information has some, uh, uh, only has some short description and, and definition, but the, uh, uh, CADF has a really nice definition of what should be part of every single audit log. And it is framed, and it is framed as seven W questions. So when, when did it happen? What happened? Who initiated it? On what did it happen? From where and to where? And where was it observed? Now, let me map you that questions to the current audit log that we have. What happened? We obviously log the HTTP um, method that happened. That it will be get, delete, post, put, um, um, what else we do, watch, list. We do that. Uh, when did it happen? Well, obviously there's a timeout. There's an information about when the request came in and when the response was, uh, was sent out. And who initiated it? There are four, in, four field of information who, in, who actually is behind every single request. Obviously, when we will be using the, uh, the non-secured endpoint, that will be empty, which is in majority of cases pointless. So, but we're, we're, let's focus on the secured endpoint. We, we know the user, we know the groups that he's part of. We eventually know if he was working as himself or he was uh, impersonating. On what did it happen? So here we just present the URI of the, uh, of the request that this request was uh, targeting. And from where was it in initiated? Obviously, that will be the, uh, the client's IP. Uh, so there are two unanswered questions, although one of them has a really simple answer. Where was it observed? I told you, I showed you at the third slide. It was observed at the API server level. And that's fine when we are having just one API server. But unfortunately, with the aggregated uh, cube, we can have multiple API servers, even more. And I was talking with Nihil, Nihil yesterday. We can have a federated cube server. And in those cases, you want to know the level at which particular request was logged. You want to know whether this happened on API server A, B, C, or else. You want to know if it, if it went through a cube aggregator, whether it originated from, um, from a federated server, or whether it originated from a, directly from a, uh, from a client. So as I said, the current solution has its pros and cons. Obviously, one of the big pros is very lightweight. It's almost negligible the ahead of, uh, of the current implementation. And it's very simple format. Uh, the format is Apache access log similar like, so it's very easy to parse that or use existing tools to parse the information from, uh, from the thing. But unfortunately, it is only HTTP, so there are no deeper inter in inspection into what was modified, how the actual object that was passed through looked like, what was happening with the object. And as I said, it's very noisy. Currently, the log is tons of, has tons of tons of information, and majority of it is coming from other components of the system, which is, in some cases, is perfectly okay because you're, you wanna have everything logged. But there are cases that you wanna focus only on certain area. And, uh, and what I said as, as well at the beginning, it is currently only log file based. There is no possibility to send the logs to a central file. So what is the future? The future is the future 22. 
Uh, this is where the auditing discussion is happening. This is where uh, it, everything that I'm talking about originates from. And most importantly, the community pool number 145, this is where Stefan and I created a proposal how the advanced auditing that I'll be talking in a minute about uh, should look like. What should be their features, when we, what we should be able to do, and what's possible. So let me quickly go through the proposal and, and let you off uh, to, to, to enjoy the, the afternoon party. So the biggest question that we, uh, we wanted to answer, and although we have the implementation currently in place inside the API server, we wanted to uh, rethink that idea and, and ask ourselves, do we really want to bake the auditing inside of the API server? Or maybe it will be doable to have um, an external solution outside of the API server. But after some tinkering, we figured out that, uh, well, the external approach doesn't have that good knowledge of what's going on in Cube. It doesn't have uh, the necessary uh, information about the, the objects that are uh, being processed by the API server, whereas inside of the API server, we can clearly go all the way down to the storage level. So that's why, that's why the, the later uh, approach won. And there are four main concepts uh, that we want to introduce with the new proposal. Most importantly, event. The audit event is the actual structure that will hold the entire information about every single request. Uh, that includes, and I need to figure out to my, uh, my notes, that will include obviously the information that we currently have, which is time stop, source IP method, URI, user information, namespace. But additionally, we would like to decode the group version kind information, the response code like previously, and most importantly, the request objects. Maybe at some point in time, we will be able to provide you with the diff information, what has changed in the, uh, in, uh, in, in, in the object. The policy, the policy, uh, and let me go back to the event once again, and the event object will be filled by all those different layers and then pushed over to, uh, to the output backend. The policy, which will describe which layers, and this will be a, obviously a cluster operator uh, configurable option, which layers you're interested in. So for example, we were initially th uh, thinking about three uh, possible uh, uh, layers. The first one will be identical to the current one, which is the HTTP, uh, HTTP headers level. So you will basically get the same information that we currently provide. The next level was request objects, where we would put the entire object as is past, uh, be that uh, protobuf, maybe we would probably encode protobuf, but JSON-like object, and that would be unstructured object that would be, uh, that would be logged as part, as, part of the, um, as part of the event. And the third level, which is probably will be the toughest one to achieve, but we would, we would really like to, uh, to get at this point at some, uh, at some point in time, is the storage level, where we could actually provide you with the diff information of what has changed to the object. That would be super freaking awesome, but we'll see where we get with that. Um, the rules. Remember how I mentioned that we currently lock everything? That includes every single user, every single component, and every single request. So I've, um, I've looked into Audit D in Linux, and um, it has similar notion of rules. The rules allow you to filter the information that you actually care about in the Audit log, meaning that you are only interested in certain calls. For here, we could uh, limit the number of uh, the logging to a particular user, to a particular resource, or maybe a particular namespace, or maybe a particular component that we're interested in. Uh, we would like to have the rules very composable and, and easily configurable. And finally, uh, finally the output. Uh, the current output is log file based, right? That, that's what I said. So the best option currently would be to be able to aggregate all the auditing information together into a single place from multiple 
um, API servers, from uh, from cube aggregator and from the federator federation server all together to a single place. For that, we uh, we need to be able to obviously send that over to a single place. But additionally, we need to be able to correlate the uh, those um, three or multiple places together somehow. And this is where our, my discussion with Nickel yesterday was about uh, being able to inject um, their request ID and, 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 and pass it over all the way down through all those layers so that they all can share that information and that will be easy to uh, to connect those information afterwards. So the future is bright, uh, but of, of course we are a community and we need you. If you're a cluster user and you need auditing, you have some ideas, what would be good to have, reach out to me. Uh, see the, uh, the proposal, community poll 145, comment on it. Every single input is important. Uh, if you're afraid of uh, GitHub, I can understand that one. Reach out to me directly, either uh, either personally, I'll be here till Friday morning, or or any other person that are, that is interested. And I know that Alex is is interested in auditing. Stefan is 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 going back and back and forth here somewhere. Uh, reach out to us. We would like to hear from you. If you're a developer and you have some knowledge around that and you can help us with implementing, please do so as well. Thank you very much.